The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN Tuesday morning, just after 9 a.m. Eastern time. We got about 30 minutes to go until the start of trading and you got markets picking things up in negative action. We kick off all the big tech earnings today. We get Google Alphabet. We get Microsoft after the bell tonight. We get Meta tomorrow. We get Apple and Amazon on Thursday, along with many other companies. Some of them already out. We'll get into those. But right now, the market's in negative territory. Walmart coming out, revising their outlook last night. Walmart down almost 10%. Right now, Target down lower as well. You're seeing it hit many different equities. The Dow right now off 113 points, under 32,000, 31,800. 55, you get the NASDAQ, negative 66 points, 12,288. S&Ps are off 15. That's about four tenths percent in the red. Bitcoin, trading lower, right at about 21,000 right now for Bitcoin. That's a daily chart. Back to a 15 minute to see the action. We get the crude contract up $1.62 at $98.32. Gold contract this morning down about $2 at $17.17 so far. And we jump to the VIX. Volatility index this morning, $24.03. The market accelerated higher into the close yesterday. That's a little drop off you see into the close. And then we got a spike right when we got those Walmart numbers. And let's jump up to it, jump over to it. Why not? Walmart sinks as inventories and thrifty shoppers hit Outlook. The biggest retailer reduces prices to clear merchandise, inventory, lowers their earnings outlook, shows inflation is hitting demand. Uh, watching some analysis about this last night, even early this morning. If anybody's going to be hit, by a slowdown in the economy, folks, it's going to be the poorest of us all. And Walmart services those customers more so than anybody else. Uh, profit outlook gets cut in a surprise warning weeks ahead of their earnings report, sending the retailer shares tumbling. New questions about the U.S. consumer's ability to sustain their voracious spending habits with inflation at four decade high. So adjusted earnings per share are going to fall as much as 13 percent in the current year. Two months ago, the world's largest retailer said earnings per share would only dip about 1%. That's a material fact that they had to come out and disclose, I guess, when they knew it. In February, the company had predicted a modest increase. So did you see that? In February, they were looking for an increase. Two months ago, was that May, they're looking for a slight dip of 1%. Fast forward, earnings going to fall as much as 13%. There you see the action last night. We'll jump over to Walmart in a moment. I think it's sputtering right around where it was on that acceleration last night. And we do have a lot of companies. We already have some. McDonald's, some decent earnings, barely trading higher this morning. We'll jump over to some of the other ones as well. Um, but, yeah, they were down almost 10%. And for the retailers, they got a lot of inventory, man. They're going to have to lower those prices, and uh, they're probably seeing some waning demand. Operating Operating income will fall 13 to 14 percent for the quarter and 11 to 13 percent for the full year. Increasing levels of food and fuel inflation are affecting how customers spend. We're now anticipating more pressure on general merchandise in the second half of the year. It's only July, folks. It's only the seventh month of the year. We got 12 months of the year. Walmart's looking for five and a half more months, five months, we'll call it, since it's July 26th of this type of action. That's probably what's sending shockwaves a little bit through their stock in particular. We jump over to Walmart, and yeah, sitting right at about 130 bucks, where it traded down to. Folks, that is a harsh, harsh pullback for a company like Walmart. You're talking about almost a 10% haircut. It was probably more than 10% at the lows there. We've clawed it back a little bit. You jump over to Target. Target trades down from about 158 to 148. So you're talking about a $10 move. What is that? 6%, 6.5%. Be interesting to see if there's any divergence. There'll probably be some, but they're dealing with some similar woes here. I imagine, um, I wonder what the customer base is going to do, how they are going to fare in terms of Walmart's customer base versus Target's customer base. Uh, Target's customer base, a little bit more affluent, to say the least. 
than Walmart's. See how those shake out. But nonetheless, this morning, it's going to be an interesting open, especially in retail, man, with Target. You're down about $8. Walmart down about 10% as we kick things off. All right, let's jump over to McDonald's since they were out this morning as well. Some decent earnings from McDonald's. They're up about a buck, man, but these are strong numbers. Second quarter earnings to topping estimates. Revenue slightly below expectations. Net sales fell 3%, but that was hurt in part by closures of McDonald's Russian and Ukrainian restaurants. Global same-store sales, almost 10% in the quarter. Here's the thing, though, man. We got 10% inflation almost, right? I'm ballparking, but that's the first thing I saw. Kudos to Walmart for at least keeping up with the pace of inflation. I mean, folks, in theory, if inflation's at 9%, your company should be doing 9% more sales just to keep up with the real inflation that's going on in the economy. Uh, nonetheless, it's probably not 9.7%, and it's probably not 9.7% across the whole globe. Nonetheless, 255 a share versus 257. That's a big number that everyone's watching right now. You saw Walmart just get punished for missing their earnings. McDonald's, they beat on earnings. They got a slight miss on revenue. Some of these same store sales are just staggering, man. Uh, so net sales did fall 3%, but as they said, hurt by closing all the restaurants in Russia and Ukraine. Global same store sales up 9.7%, just even in the U.S., right? Same store sales, 3.7% in the quarter. The market was looking for 2.8. That's a big number, man. 3.7% uh, credited strategic price hikes and its value offerings for its strong performance. Last quarter, McDonald's exec said some low-income consumers were trading down to cheaper options in response to inflation. Uh, international developmental licensed markets, same store sales, 16%, man. Uh, all right, there are more numbers. I think I had, did I have a Bloomberg article about it as well? Because they grew, what I want to talk about, and I'll find it, doesn't even matter. Digital sales at Walmart in the U.S., I believe it is, almost one out of three dollars. Digital sales. That one blew me away, man. Talk about transitioning to a digital world. Now, with that in mind, folks, Walmart, uh, McDonald's, excuse me, McDonald's, some pretty strong numbers, right? And you're barely positive by 50 cents, man. I would say if you come out and you beat on earnings, you beat on same store sales in this type of an environment. Now, Walmart, they've overperformed this market. The one thing I will say, folks, we had some Walmart in my newsletter. We recently just got rid of it ahead of this earnings cycle, and I'll show you why. Um, a lot of the volume on this equity coming in at the lows that we've had, it's sitting pretty high up in an area that we've touched a couple times, about 260, 255 has been an area of resistance for this stock, and that dates back all the way to November when we hit a high of about 257 on this equity. But you back things up. Whether you're talking about just this year, right? Look at the low in March, man. Twenty. This is a weekly chart at McDonald's, 27.8 million shares, right? You got a low in May. That's an area of volume as well. You get that spike low volume on June 13th. Now, what I'm going to pull up is I'm going to jump to the daily. And you'll see that this week they had a daily on McDonald's uh, volume all at the lows. We come up. What do we do? We come up on lighter volume. We turn over yesterday hard. They come out with pretty decent numbers, man, but we'll see how it shakes out. Now, put McDonald's quickly on the daily. Check out that daily spike at that low, man. 7.2 million shares on June 17th since then. We've risen on pretty light volume, man. Yesterday, a tough day. Today, they're going to open at about 251 on some decent, strong earnings. We'll see how they trade. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back with our man, Kevin Hinks from TD Ameritrade Network. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. 
everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps negative by 21 points right now. The NASDAQ 100 negative by 84 and the Dow negative by 149. Let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hinks. Every trading day, folks, 12 noon Eastern time on the TD Ameritrade Network right here on Tiger TV. Program Fast Market with your hosts, Kevin Hinks and Tom White. And folks, there's nothing like this week, man. We're going to jump right into it because we got so much to talk about. Kevin Hinks, good morning. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. Yeah, Fast and Furious are coming at you, and they're even coming at you from companies not putting out earnings, Tommy, this morning. Right. Walmart really laying on the market with their announcement uh, yesterday, cutting outlook for, for a second quarter, cutting out for, outlook for the full year. Uh, that's it, it's, not dis it's not really surprising. I think that, that these retailers are seeing weakness. It's just surprising that they're not through their inventory yet. But all things considered, the market's taken a pretty good gut punch here with such a consumer staple down, you know, almost 10%. So, but I mean, UPS is down a little bit. That's the one that really confuses me because UPS put up some good numbers, Tommy. And, uh, beat on earnings per share, beat on revenue, confirmed full year guidance, and and hiked their stock buyback, and the stock is still down, uh, uh, you know, only slightly. But that's the one I'm going to watch today. Now, McDonald's is up, Coke is up, GE is up, General Motors is down slightly. But all things considered, uh, Walmart, you know, put, putting the dampers on what might have been a good day, at least a good start to the day. If, if we didn't, but uh, yeah, this news out of Walmart is alarming. What does that mean for Target, Amazon, Dollar Tree, Dollar General, even maybe a Home Depot, you know, anything in the retail system? People are seeing weakness. See, Doug McMillan, CEO, said higher food and fuel prices are prompting consumers to cut back, Tommy. There it is. Pretty remarkable, man. It happened right after the bell last night. Now, these companies, Walmart and Target in particular, they report, I believe, August 16th and 17th. So we're about three August weeks away, folks, Walmart, from there. Yes. 
from their earnings, um, but they had material facts they had to get out, I guess, Kevin, man. And it's pretty material. Earnings down by 13%, and uh, not that long ago, a couple months ago, I think it was, that they just saw them slip in by 1%, and then I think back in February, they actually had them rising by the low single digits, so you can see how that shift has taken place. We got an IMF cut to GDP, their expectation yep. this morning, Kevin. We got a Fed meeting starting with an expectation for 75 basis points coming out tomorrow at 2 p.m. Eastern time. And then, of course, we start all the big tech stocks. I'm, I'm generalizing, but pretty much, man. We got Alphabet, Google after the bell tonight. We got Microsoft after the bell tonight. Uh, with so much shaping you talked about, I mean, Walmart, the retail, it is surprising. I woke up this morning, Kevin, and, you know, it's one of those mornings where there's enough going on where I open my 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 phone my iphone i pull up the thinkorswim platform and i say where are we going to be this morning man where are we going to be and we were only down about 10 points i said not bad with that walmart warning last night coming into this morning with everything on the table as a trader kevin right where do you it's kind of tough to decide what is most important what i'm looking at right now as in you have the fed meeting right and then you have all the earnings going on you have an imf cut and then you have the retail cut how do you kind of organize your brain and this is a very general, difficult, impossible million dollar question. But on a week like this, you know, are you looking for individual equities? Are you trying to get the scope of the Fed? Where is your head kind of at as we come into maybe the most important week we've had in a while right now in this market? Well, Tommy, if, if you're trading the overall market, you trade those numbers as they hit. If you're trading individual names, you trade that price action as it happens. Right, you, you, the the best way to say that to describe that, Tommy, is to stay where you are. Don't get distracted. If you're trading Walmart today or UPS today, right, stay with that news and that that came out. If you're trading the Spy or the E Minis or one of those, well, that's a bigger picture, right? That uh, you know the the E Minis are down about a half percent right now. Remember, you've got big huge names coming out at the end of the day today. You mentioned uh, Google Alphabet, Microsoft, Visa, Chipotle, Texas Instruments. So stay in w with the products that you're trading and trade that price action. Don't, yeah, this is an easy time to get distracted by other things, right? So make sure you stay where you are and trade those numbers that you're seeing in front of you in that price action. It's a great answer, man. I appreciate that answer from you, the education, because it's not a, it's not an easy question, man. Uh, but I know a lot of people are thinking it because it's, you just got so much going on right now. And then, Kevin, we get um, later in the week after the Fed meeting, we get so much economic data out Thursday and Friday right. on top of it. Pretty pretty cool the, what we're in this week. We, um, I think we'll, we may know a lot more about this market come Friday than we do uh, today, yesterday. But we're finding out right now, man, with companies like Walmart. And you mentioned McDonald's. McDonald's had some strong numbers, man. I was actually surprised. They weren't a little bit higher, yep. Kevin, on those numbers. Um, well, I think the overall about... market might be weighing them down slightly. Sure. I think a lot of these stocks with good news, they'd be a little higher if the market was overall higher. So yep. but I would watch McDonald's, how it trades through the end of the week and, and you know how it finishes the day. But because, you know, McDonald's is in you know several of the indices and it can't hide when the overall market is under pressure. So, yeah, it's good news sure. out of McDonald's, though. Uh, but, yeah, we'll see how that price action uh, unfolds through the day. As we've seen, man, we got the opening bell in five minutes and 40 seconds, and that's where we get to find out where supply actually meets demand. With that in mind, Kevin, everything up in the air going on. What are you guys talking about on Fast Market coming up at 12 today? Well, today's an easy day, right? These days... Uh, kind of write themselves. So we'll look at Microsoft, Alphabet, Visa. Real easy today. Uh, the it. three biggest names coming out with earnings after the bell. I, I, I figured you were going to go Microsoft and Alphabet Google, and I was hoping you would go Visa in there as well, because that's an interesting one I was looking at as well, man. American Express trading higher uh, last week, and Visa, we'll see how they trade out today. Kevin, we appreciate the time on a busy morning as always, man, and we'll be looking forward to the program at 12 o'clock today. You have a great one, man. Thanks for having me on, Tommy. Have a great day. Always a pleasure. Folks, tune in every trading day. Today's a great one to check it out if you haven't, folks. 12 noon Eastern time, fast market.
Microsoft, Google, and Visa all coming out with their numbers. As Kevin mentioned, with many other companies, man, um, it would be an epic week of earnings, folks, even without the big tech stocks in terms of how many companies are coming out this week. But we get all the big tech stocks as well, and they started off with Microsoft to Google today and Visa. We jump over to Visa real quick. You take a look at the three-year weekly, right? Not as much volatility as some of the other equities. We've been shopping around between about 190, you could call it. You reach a high earlier in the year of 235, maybe somewhere around the 220 to 230 area. You come into earnings, though, well off the recent lows that we just had of 185. We're sitting at about 215. So you're up, what, 30 bucks from that low? What is that? That's a good 15, 16, 17% Visa is up off their lows. Uh, and let's check out the other two companies he mentioned. Microsoft. So Microsoft does a complete 50% retracement from the COVID lows to the highs of 349.67. We're bouncing around in that area at 258, down from 349. We get Alphabet and Google, two companies, one in the same after the bell tonight. Let's see what this thing did in a retracement real quickly. Didn't quite make it to the 50%. Almost. Been sputtering around about the 3A2. You know, I was talking to my dad recently. Now, Apple and Amazon are out on Thursday. I was saying, man... Apple has held up so well compared to some of the other equities, folks. Apple is sitting at only, they're sitting above a 236 line of their entire COVID run from 54 bucks to 182. NASDAQ 100, folks, is sitting at the 50% line. If Apple just was the where the NASDAQ 100 was at, it would be at 117. Talk a little bit more about this. We'll be right back with the opening bell. Of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world class gold project in a tier one mining district. This is a large scale, low cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome.
Welcome back, folks. We are 28 seconds into the trading day and markets holding up relatively okay so far. S&P is negative by 17 points, no immediate drop off. Uh, and sometimes you see it, folks, when you get overnight action, like we just said, when you get a company like Walmart, trading down 10% overnight, and you only got the S&Ps down four tenths percent with this type of volatility looming. That's an interesting market action. Uh, now you could make the case rightfully so man. Google and Microsoft, they're not going to be hurt by the news of the Walmart. You know, very different business businesses, obviously. Uh, Microsoft might be most immune. Google, heavy on the consumer advertising, right? That's why we've seen Google, you back things up on a three-year weekly. We're chopping around at recent lows on Google because of the pullback we've seen on advertising. Okay, there's your daily jumping literally right down to almost making lows for the year on Google versus what do we just say? Microsoft up from 241 to 258. They're not that far off either, man. I'm going to pull up an article on Microsoft in a moment, but Apple to finish up this conversation. So Apple down about a quarter percent so far this morning. You jump to the year weekly to get the whoops. There you go to get the full COVID run. Uh, now, this is what I was talking about, folks. Apple, the biggest company in the world, okay, market cap, why they have the big cap uh, impact on the indices. Apple has really helped these markets when you look at where it is in relation to all the other indices. It's surprising that you have the biggest equity in the world that has the most impact on the indices behaving so well. What does that mean? That means you have many other companies behaving more poorly. Is that how you'd say it? More poorly? worse than the indice, I guess would be the way to say it. You have equities that are performing much worse than the overall performance of the index if you have Apple performing so well, right? Apple, Apple's only trading at, folks, prices we were at November 15th, okay? Now, it was quite an acceleration into the end of the year. We make it up to 182, all right? But we're sitting, as I put it, above the 236 line of the entire COVID run, okay? For some reference, look where the NASDAQ 100 is. NASDAQ 100 had a 10,000 point leg from an A, well, it's not really an A to B, if it is, watch out, uh, but 6,600 up to 16,700, you've been sputtering around the 50% line for some time. Don't believe that that can't happen with Apple. I'm not saying it will, folks, but boy, if Apple ever trades back down $20 to 132, that's talking about $300 billion wiped off their market cap. You, pr you price it down to 117, what is that, 35 bucks? That's over $500 billion in market cap Apple would wipe out. I don't expect that to happen. Uh, they are more immune, as many of these tech companies are, to what's going on, but they are not completely immune in any way. And let's, with that, jump over to, uh, well, we'll start it off with this one. This one out this morning, IMF slashes global GDP forecast as economic outlook glows gloomy and more uncertain. So they now expect the world economy to grow 3.2% this year before slowing to 2.9% in 2023, that marks a downgrade of 0.4% and 0.7 percentage points, respectively, just from where they were in April. So that was out this morning. Now, jumping over, I have a Microsoft article up here, I believe I do. Come on. Oh, don't do it to me. Where are you at? Here we go. No. There we go. Okay. Now, this is making the case that newly cheap Microsoft is still a favorite growth play for investors. The company recently cut its outlook due to the dollar strength. The drop has made for a more attractive valuation. You could say that with any equity, though, folks. Okay. Wall Street expects Microsoft today will report earnings growth of 6% and a 14% increase in revenue, extending a years long streak of double digit sales expansion. While Microsoft has not been immune to this year's tech, stella, tech stock sell off, the company has a reputation for durable growth. Now, this that's that's a little bit of an opinion that we're, we're getting into here, folks, okay? Uh, durable growth thanks to business software and cloud computing offerings that analysts see as mission critical for corporations, making customers unlikely to drop them in a downturn. Maybe that's the same case with Apple, man. Uh, we were talking about in the den earlier, people paying their cell phone bills, right? A little bit of a problem with cell phone bills when you talk about Verizon, um, AT&T, they were talking about uh, the timeline of when they are going to collect that money because they're having trouble collecting phone bills. And surprising when you think that the phone is a lifeline to many folks, probably one of the last things that you'll get let go BK out of your life. Can't really exist these days without a phone able to function. Similar action maybe with Apple and Microsoft, but 
The only thing I'm going to say is that's what Apple looks like. Okay, you're at the 236. That's what Microsoft looks like. You're below the 382 and you made it all the way down to the 50%. So, you know, in the face of holding up well, keep in mind how unwell Microsoft has held up for some time. Doesn't mean it's going to continue that way. And in the long term, folks, uh, this company is super strong. I mean, we, I think uh, TFNN, we have a Microsoft 365 account, right? We use it for email. It's an outstanding service. I think it's like 99 bucks a year. Maybe they jacked it up recently to 119 or 129 or something like that. But that service for that amount of money allows you to use Microsoft Word, Microsoft Outlook, uh, PowerPoint, Excel, right? And you have multiple users that are able to use that. Now that is just for a small business or for a family. When you get into the larger scope of things, it is very difficult once you're using those products to get off of that product. I mean, how am I going to get off Microsoft Outlook when I've been using it for decades at this point, let alone Word, PowerPoint, um, Excel, Google Sheets is out there to compete with some of those for sure. But nonetheless, Microsoft back to almost the 50%, which is remarkable, and you're down 1.6%. And this market's slipping a little bit with the S&Ps down about 22 points right now. Microsoft shares have fallen 23% this year. It says a smaller drop than the NASDAQ 100 index, but I just showed you some of these tech stocks have been performing better than the NASDAQ 100. Uh, Apple much better than even Microsoft or so. The stock is now fetching 24 times estimated earnings. Now, that number is going to be a little bit even lower today because it's trading lower. Five-year average, 27.4. The only reason I don't like a five-year average, man, is because, you know, it's been a heck of a five years for this market, even going back to, what, 2017, 2018, this thing's been running. In early Jan June, so just last month, Microsoft paired its fourth quarter outlook, and the company also is slowing hiring in its security software and Azure cloud business, given weaker economic conditions. Azure, always a big deal. That thing has grown rapidly. Um, so we'll see how that plays out tonight. So when you talk about software, some of the Microsoft numbers here, while well, Wall Street remains largely positive on the longer-term outlook for software in general, analysts have been lowering their expectations as they brace for a potential recession. Software and services companies will report 2022 earnings growth of 13.6%, down from 148 expected in late January. The consensus view for Microsoft's fourth quarter earnings have dropped by 2.9% over the past three months, while consensus for revenue is down 0.6%. Yeah, however, should revenue come in close to expectations, it would extend a streak of double-digit growth that began in 2017. Double-digit growth for the third biggest company in the world going back to 2017. I mean, that's an interesting one for you, folks. And look at, so this is NASDAQ 100 volatility trending lower. These markets have been trending liar, higher into a very important week, folks. And right as that happens, right, what happens? We get a, a big write down from Walmart. We get all the big tech stocks out tonight. We get the S&P near 4,000. And we have volatility near recent lows. Let's see what happens. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. TFNN has been your trusted source of analysis for bonds, metals, stocks, commodities, and options for years. And we are happy to announce that we are bringing that same caliber of analysis for the Forex market. Teddy Kekstad has 30 plus years of experience in Forex trading, commodity risk management, Forex hedging, volatility, and so much more. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with elite coverage of all major currency pairs, including the DXY, Euro Dollar, Pound Dollar, Aussie Dollar, dollar yen, dollar Swiss franc, and so much more. Teddy will recommend specific trades when the market presents them and provide updates throughout the week when warranted. For the month of July, inaugural members to the Tiger Forex Report will receive 25% off the monthly subscription for as long as they're subscribed. Just use promo code TEDDY25 to lock in the added savings. This offer is good only for the month of July, so do not miss your opportunity to save on the Tiger Forex Report. TFNN, educating investors. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, 
as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. we got a little bit of volatility across the board right now. Checking in on some of those tech stocks. Apple right now, negative by six-tenths percent. Amazon getting a little bit of a hit from Walmart, but they bounce on the open. Amazon down 2.7% right now to start off the trading day. You were as low. I think you almost got a 115 handle into the low 115s at least. Let's see what our low is on Amazon exactly. 114.95. You did. We're trading right now at 117.60. Microsoft shares down 1.5%. Man, look at that drop off as they await their numbers. Google off 1.7%. Man, pretty staggering. NASDAQ 100 is only down one. 115 points right now. That's not even a full percent. When you get the two biggest companies out with their numbers tonight, trading down 1.6 and 1.5%. Jumping over to the companies that have their numbers, McDonald's, they give up some of those gains. McDonald's basically flat. As Kevin was stating, they're definitely getting some headwinds being in some of the indices. But I'll tell you, Stokes, we sold this stock in my newsletter, Rocket Equities, yesterday. We'd held it for a while. Uh, I made the case earlier in the program that it was sitting in an area of resistance about 255 coming into their numbers and boy they had some pretty strong numbers to be trading flat this morning that's what I, i'll leave it at that you know if they missed on earnings where do they go they beat on earnings folks earnings are everything right now in this market they beat on earnings they had a strong numbers they missed on revenue slightly they got strong same store sales across the board and they're down one tenth percent coca-cola uh, with their numbers, trading higher this morning, up 2% for Coca-Cola. We jump over to their numbers, Coca-Cola. 16% increase in organic revenue growth. That excludes items like currency and acquisition. The market was only looking for 8.2%. That's a big one, man. Organic revenue growth. Double what the market was looking for. For the full year, they're looking for organic revenue growth of 12 to 13. That's up from a previous estimate of 7 to 8. That's despite expected negative currency impact of 9%. Earnings, 70 cents a share. Analysts were looking for 67. Uh, strong numbers across the board for Coke, and they're trading higher this morning. All right, what, we, what else we got pulled up here? Let's see. Let's jump to natural gas, right? This is a big one this morning. We got natural gas spiking yet again. EU nations reach agreement to reduce gas for next winter. So, European Union countries reached a political agreement to cut their gas use by 15% through next winter as the prospect of a full cutoff from Russian supplies grows increasingly likely. Folks, I'm not sure how this one's going to play out, okay? Yet energy ministers meeting in Brussels gave the green light to a proposal to voluntarily cut their gas usage over the next months. And the Czech presidency of the EU said in a post on Twitter, the plan makes a 15% target mandatory 
under an emergency situation, such as a severe disruption to the flows of Russia, albeit with certain opt-outs for particularly vulnerable nations or those integral to the bloc's network as a whole. Folks, if that happens, it's going to be a mess, no matter what. Uh, Hungary was the only country that voted against the rules. Uh, Yeah, And, and as we know, it's a big mess over there, man. Europe relying on Russia for their energy needs, and there's your natural gas chart, folks. You spike up to 975. We're back already in the 924. You take a look at this thing on a daily. Talk about trading right back up to the recent highs, right? Let me take that Fibonacci off since you gave it all back. We are right back to where we were on June 8th. Absolutely remarkable. You make it back down to 550 before charging higher and getting above the highs of June 8th. You want some volatility, man. Watch out for that natural gas. Watch out everywhere right now, though, folks. We got a little bit of negative action right now across the board in a big way. Yeah, Roku. What's up with Roku, man? They just get some news out there. Downgraded as analysts see a crack in their story. Let's see. So Roku has their numbers, I believe, as well. When are they out? They have today after the bell? Did they already come out? No, they're out Thursday. Yeah, Roku's out Thursday with their numbers. Um, what else are we seeing? Yeah, I'm not sure why it's down 10% right now. Does anybody know? I know user 21 putting it out there. That's why I pulled it up. Uh, big pullback for Roku. They've just been up pretty dramatically, too, to 97 bucks last Thursday. And they are dropping fast right now, down 10% for Roku. You got the NASDAQ 100 now down 1.1%. Probably not the action you want, man, coming in to the big tech stocks earnings. Amazon now down 3.6% right now. We pull up Apple off about six tenths. Apple. Kind of always, always holding up a little bit better than the market. And then the two big dogs tonight, Microsoft down 1.6. And we jump over to Google shares off 1.5. We jump over to Visa. Visa holding up relatively well. Oh, come on. There we go. Uh, basically flat right now for Visa shares at 214.27. I believe we get Chipotle Mexico Grill as well tonight. They pull back. I mean, you get that type of a... Uh, broadcast of economic conditions from Walmart, man, that's going to hit almost everybody if that's what's happening to the consumer. Walmart, I think they're within 90% of Americans live within 10 miles of a Walmart. Doesn't mean they shop there, but nonetheless, they are everywhere. Chipotle down about 2.4% right now with the S&Ps down as well. All right, let's jump around to see what else I have pulled up here. It's almost too many articles to keep track of the things going on. So Coinbase, they're facing an investigation into their listings on whether they're securities. Uh, they're constantly in the press, it seems, right, for, for whether they're getting looked into, probed by the SEC, et cetera. Uh, this probe began before, before, let's see. Yeah, this began before the recent uh, charges came out in terms of insider trading. And they're going to they're gonna have the SEC on them for a while, man. If you heard the attorney general in New York say fraud is fraud, and they're playing with fire over Coinbase, man, and I would not be touching Coinbase right now. I've talked about it many times. These markets rolling over, man. Coinbase down 9.6%. Yeah, watch out on this one, folks. There's a lot better plays if you want to get into crypto than trading Coinbase, and that would be my take on it. GM, uh, with their numbers, fall short of expectations. Supply chain challenges dent profits. They confirm that they have secured the battery materials needed to build 1 million EVs a year by 2025. The company maintained its previous earnings guidance for the full year, saying it expects to ramp up production in the second half. But they miss earnings for the second quarter after supply chain issues led to ship fewer vehicles than expected car landscape man it is a messy one right now there's gm you're down about 2.7 percent let's see how walmart's trading on their numbers they catch a little bit of a pop you're only down 8.2 percent you jump over to target shares down 4.7 percent shopify whoo we think they're laying off 10 percent yeah they're gonna lay off 10 percent of workers uh says e-commerce projections were too upbeat it's probably putting it lightly take a look at this thing man there's a run-up for you I mean, we came into COVID, folks, okay? And I'm going to even, I'm not even going to take the weak spike that we got right before things started to sell off. <coughs> Excuse me. We came into COVID at 48.71. Shopify's sitting at 30 bucks. You made it up to 176. Now, Shopify, folks, the TFNN website, 
We use Shopify. It's an absolutely great platform, especially for small businesses. But boy, they got ahead of themselves. I think we all got a lesson in multiples. Uh, Shopify's workforce has increased from 1,900 in 2016 to roughly 10,000 by the year 2021. So they're cutting 10% of that. Uh, yeah, I'll pull up a couple of these numbers when we get back as well. And don't forget, folks, this is the last week to check out the Tiger Forex report and save 25%. We'll talk to our man Teddy Kegstat tomorrow at 40 past the hour, as we always do. Check it out. Save 25%. Still get a money back guarantee. Nothing to risk, folks. Check it out. We'll talk about that when we get back as well. Stay tuned. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours and now they are expanding their reach with the tiger's den available to all tigers and tigresses for just one dollar for the year there's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders in the tiger's den you can look over the shoulders of tom o'brien and the other tfnn hosts while they analyze charts during their live tiger tv programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas interact with other tigers and tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps right now, negative by 21 points. I got Shopify up here to finish the conversation real quickly on Shopify. You're down 16%. You're trading at 3078. Some of the news, just pulling it up on the Thinkorswim platform here. Uh, some of the numbers I wanted to point out. So Shopify reported annual revenue growth of 86% in 2020, 57% in 2021 to about $4.6 billion. However, the company reported a softening this year and warned that this year's numbers would not benefit from the pandemic trends. In the memo Tuesday, today, okay, you have the CEO saying, what we see now is the mix reverting to roughly where pre-COVID data would have suggested it should be at this point. Still growing steadily, but it was not a meaningful five-year leap ahead. 
They pulled all that growth forward, folks. Now it's waning. They're where they thought they were we would be five years ago. Okay, now, I don't know if that's the case, man, because you're trading at where you were um, in prices three years ago. Nonetheless, you're trading at 31 bucks, man. You back this up even further, right? You see where this thing was in 2016, single digits. Even in 2017, you were trading at a high of what? 12, 13 bucks. You're trading at 31. A lot of things got ahead of themselves in a big way. Let's check out on currencies where we're trading at right now. Euro, US dollar. We pull back a little bit, inching towards parity yet again. Look at that pullback, man, from 102.4 to 101.32. Folks, you look at the action, whether it's in currencies, whether it's within notes and bonds. I mean, look at the continued rise right now we're dealing with in notes and bonds driving this market. We got the 10-year yield below 2.73%. Low 2.73%. We were above 2.5%. Remarkable in a big way. Folks, head on over to the front page of TFNN. We got our man Basil Chapman coming up live next. You got a few minutes. In between that few minutes, you can sign up for the Tiger Forex report. I'm going to stress it this week, folks, because this is the last week to lock in 25% savings forever. Okay? You'd be paying $72.75 instead of $97. And it still comes with a money back guarantee. So check it out. Use it for a month. If you're not happy, you don't think you're going to use it going forward, cancel it. You get your money back anyway. And best case scenario, you decide you want to keep it, you've locked in that 25% forever, as long as you stay a subscriber. And we'll talk to our man Teddy at 40 past the hour tomorrow. It's Fed Day. Always a good day to talk to our man Teddy Kekstad. Thanks so much, folks. Stay tuned. Always a good day to check out our man Basil Chapman. Coming up next.